Morning. Meridian 2021 CF 715, people of the state of Illinois versus Bradley Yawn. You may be seated. I'm advised that all alternates are present in the jury assembly room. Mr. Jones, are you prepared to proceed? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Keck is looking into a brief issue, uh, so we may need five minutes for that issue, but we're looking into that um, and we'll bring it up to the court if, when she returns if it's something we need to address. All right. Mr. Yon, is defense prepared to proceed? Uh, I believe so, Your Honor. All right. So we're a few minutes ahead of schedule, and so we'll take a short recess waiting for Ms. Keck to return, and we'll get the jury lined up and ready to come in and get under.
court is, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. So we are going back on the record in 2021 CF 715, People versus Bradley S. Yawn. The people are appearing by Assistant State's Attorneys Keck and Jones. And the defendant, Bradley Yawn, is appearing in person pro se. He has standby counsel, Mr. Nelson, also present. And so parties had answered that they're ready to proceed with trial previously. Mr. Jones, the state ready to proceed? Uh, we are, Your Honor. There is one issue we need to address outside the presence of the jury if the court could let me be heard. Sure. Your Honor, uh, yesterday, an individual by the name of Travis Bloom attempted to enter the courtroom while the proceedings were occurring. He was stopped by security and told he could enter at breaks. Uh, at that point, he stayed outside the courtroom, but was heard outside the courtroom making very loud comments that was were heard by Sheriff's Deputy Sam Smith inside the courtroom. Um, or Sam, was, I apologize, he was outside, but he was heard making very loud comments. At that point, um, he was told that he needed to be quiet, couldn't interrupt the court proceedings. He was... Uh, asked to leave at that point, he began to respond with profanity and intense uh, behavior. At that point, Deputy Smith told him, based on his behavior, he was not going to be allowed to come back to the courtroom proceedings for fear that he would continue to disrupt the proceedings, as is the responsibility of the sheriff's office for the security of the courtrooms. He attempted to re-enter the courtroom today. He was told that he was not going to be allowed to enter the courtroom. And again, he responded with um, profanity and anger and was uh, escorted out of the courtroom outside of the courthouse by sheriff's deputies. I did want to make a record of that. It is an open proceeding. However, the open proceedings are limited to spectators who are able to control their behavior both inside and outside of the courtroom. At this point, Mr. Bloom has shown that he could not do that. So the sheriff's office, acting in their discretion and their authority for the security of the courthouse, have banned him from returning to the courtroom. I wanted to make a record of that so the court was aware and so the defense was aware. Thank Your you. Honor, I object to this. Your Honor, uh, throughout, the, throughout my time here, my family has been repetitively denied. I understand Travis Bloom is an idiot. I understand that. Fully understand that. He holds a good heart. Um, they didn't arrest him yesterday. If he did all them things, they probably should have arrested him, right? I mean, these are very serious matters. Uh, to limit him from the courtroom simply because of this is is, is ridiculous. If a, if a person does not know that they cannot come in during a time that is not a recess, then maybe they should be explained that, or maybe there should be notices posted on a wall somewhere. Um, Your Honor, uh, for them to give him one warning and tell him you cannot come back in the courtroom is wrong. I, I believe the man should have a chance. Uh, I understand where he's highly agitated. Um, I would be too, uh, considering what's going on with my family. Um, this is quite ridiculous. I believe he should be enabled as long as he could control himself. He was simply pushed out of the courtroom without giving notice. That deputy yesterday did not give him notice that, hey, you can't come in when it's not recess, sir. I said, you can't come in, and I heard it. I heard it with my own ears. It's wrong. I've been prejudicedly treated the whole time I've been here. Insanely and ridiculously treated. Now my family has to be treated over that. It's wrong. I am in hopes and pray that the courts give him an opportunity to come in here as long as he can control his manners and sit quietly and not interrupt the courts. This has been an ongoing problem, Your Honor. I've addressed it many times due to the, or 
I've addressed the prejudice to me very many times. I've brought proof of it. I have a red thumb drive, a verbatim brand that has proof of prejudice done to me, where I have been assaulted in this court or in this jail and in this courthouse building. People have made note of it, not just outside of this courthouse Mr. today, but Young, people. If I could focus you back on Mr. Bloom, that's and, the issue before us today. Your Honor, and, and I apologize, but I am focused on that. The prejudice has been ongoing, and I believe it is even more prejudice that. My one family member who is local is not permitted to sit in. He simply tried to come in, and as I said, he's an idiot. He doesn't know that. I wouldn't know that. A common person wouldn't know that you can't come in during a recess or during a time that's not a recess. Uh, I believe he should be given a chance, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Yon, that's fine. I've heard your argument. The gentleman in the back courtroom by the door uh, with law enforcement, what's your name? Deputy Goldman. You step outside the door and see if there's anything posted about their entering the courtroom during a recess. There is, Your Honor. And what does it say, sir? It says, you may only enter the courtroom at recess or breaks. And you were here yesterday, sir? I was. And was that sign posted on the door at all times? I believe so. Have a seat, Mr. Yon. Your motion or objection is overruled. You are, as you described, idiot relative Travis Bloom should have read the door sign before he tried to enter the courtroom, and so he was advised of the court rules. And as he has attempted to disrupt these proceedings yesterday as represented, he will be barred from attending further proceedings in this matter. Mr. Jones, is the state ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. Mr. Yon, is the defense ready to proceed? I have no choice, Your Honor. All right. We'll have the bailiff bring the jury in. Members of the jury are present and have returned to the jury box. We left off with the state having presented three witnesses. So Mr. Jones, case is still in your court. Do you or on your side? Do you wish to call your next witness? We do, Your Honor. Okay, yeah. Who will that be? Now the people would call Joe Lomire. 
And Mr. Joe Lohmeyer brought in. If you would come. Joe Lohmeyer? I believe they're going to answer. Is that you? No. All right. <laughs> you just happened to come in right there. <laughs> came in at the right time, apparently. Lomar, if you'd come forward to the clerk and raise your right hand, she will swear you in. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be a truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be back. Yes. On the witness stand, please. Miss right, Keck, you're ready. Thank you, Your Honor. Could you tell us your name, please? Uh, Joe Lohmeyer. Mr. Lohmeyer, how are you employed? Uh, Sergeant Patrol Adams County Sheriff's Office. How long have you worked with the Adams County Sheriff's Department? Uh, about 18 years. I'm sorry, can I? About 18 years. I'm going to have you pull that a little bit closer. My hearing is terrible, so. Sergeant Lohmeyer, were you working on the evening of November 9th, 2021? Yes. That evening, about 6.30 in the evening, did a call come in um, where you responded to 4300 Bottom Road here in Quincy? Yes. Tell us what the call was that came in. Uh, the call came in as a, um, uh, a woman carjacking and rape. When you arrived at the residence of 4300 Bottom Road that evening, did you go inside the house? Yes. Before you went inside the house, did you notice anything about the front area of that house? As far as any markings on mm. the... Um, the front of the house um, kind of had a, a, a bit of a circle drive, and there was a, a, a grassy area um, in the center. There were some tire marks on the grassy area in the center. When you went inside, did you notice anything about the door leading from the garage into the house yeah uh, the door from the garage into the house um it, you know there were footprints on the door it had been kicked in the the door hinge or the uh latch was broke and if we can put people's exhibit 39 on the screen Is this what you saw when you talk about the indent kick? Yes. This mark here. Mm -hmm. And then also, was there this mark right here in the drywall? Yes. For the record, I'm pointing to an indent in the drywall. We go to People's Exhibit 40. And this was a close up of that mark in the drywall, correct? Yes. When you went into the residence further, um, did you observe an individual inside of that residence? Yes. Tell me what you observed about that individual. Uh, there was a older female um, sitting on the floor with her legs kind of off to the side. She appeared distraught. When you saw this older female, did you know who that was at that point? No. When you responded that evening, you were one of the first officers on scene, correct? Uh, yes. Deputy Bowden and I arrived at about the same time. Is your job when you first respond to just get a very basic statement from an individual? Yes. And you said that you had been told based on the dispatch report that it was for a carjacking and um, I believe you said a rape, is that correct? Yes. Did you have inf information about whether or not um, the suspects were on scene? Uh, the suspects were not on scene. Based on the fact that that was the report and you did not know where the suspects were, what was your concern? Um, we have a woman reporting a rape um, and, and violence, and so my concern is it's community safety, you know. Because you want to find out where the... Where this guy is at and, and try to stop any future problems. Based on that, is that why you then got a statement from this woman? Yes. Did you learn that um, her name was Tina Lohman? Yes. And did you ask her what had happened? Yes. Tell us what she told you had occurred. Jason, uh, Your Honor, testimonial hearsay. 
Your Honor, the officer testified that he was on scene, the suspects were missing, she was distraught, and he needed to find those suspects for community safety, which is all exception to the hearsay rule and confrontation clause. The court will overrule the objection as the hearsay falls within that exception. You may answer the question. Okay. So she said she was on her way home and it was... Sergeant Lohmeyer, can I have you get a little bit closer? Okay. She said she was on her way home. It was evening time. She drives a car where the headlights typically turn on automatically. But someone else had used the car previously and somehow the automatic thing was not working. So as it was starting to get dark, she was concerned about the lights. So she stopped on North Bottom Road to try to fix the light situation. And she said a truck pulled up behind her and she initially thought a man got out. She initially felt that he was there to help her with whatever situation she was having. And then learned that this was going to be a situation where he told her to scoot over, get over in the passenger seat with threat of violence. And he took the car. Sergeant Lohmeyer, once she told you that he took the car, did you also ask her as she was continuing on if she could give you a description of this man so that you could try to locate this man? Yeah, she described a white, scruffy, redheaded male. That was the male description. Did she also describe if he had any facial hair? Scruffy, scruffy beard. As after he had taken her car, what did she say that he did? She said that he began rubbing her crotch. I think she said he he demanded her jewelry first. So she gave him all that he took all the jewelry she had on herself and then her cell phone. And she said he threw the cell phone out the window. She said while this was occurring, you know, he at times was rubbing her crotch over her clothes. You know, she was very, very scared. And Sergeant Lohmeyer, as she was telling all these things, you said at the beginning that, you know, she was distraught. Did she was she still distraught as she was telling you these things? Yes, very distraught. You know, I've uh. Would you like me to describe it? OK, so when I saw her, she was on the floor. There was some crying, but it was also, I think, what I've seen in other people, a shock, just disbelief, kind of bewilderment. You know, when I would talk to her and ask her what happened there, there was like a a pain for kind of remembering it, you know, and some hesitation. And it was kind of a little bit disjointed as far as how the conversation went. And I think that was a reflection of how emotional she was. You know, she she seemed, you know, I describe it as shock, but it you know, it was the best I can describe that. Just utter confusion, I think, and disbelief is kind of what I read in her face and pain, I think, of having remembering what happened. Sergeant Lohmeyer, as she continued to tell you, you said that she was then driving home. Once they got home, what did she say she did? Your Honor, I'd like to object. I'd like to raise a continuing objection to testimony of hearsay. This does not fall under spontaneous declaration or anything of the such as she had already spoken with others before this. 
right, Ms. Keck, can you respond? Your Honor, he responded. Um, we heard yesterday that um, Tim Schmidt called 911 right away. Um, the officer then immediately responded. He was one of the first officers on the scene. Clearly, she is still undergoing the emotion and the experiencing the excitement of what had occurred based on the officer's testimony and what we heard yesterday. All right, and so I'm going to overrule your objection, Mr. Yon. Again, finding such testimony is under a hearsay exception. Sergeant Lomar, can you tell us what she said she did once she got to her residence? Yeah, yeah. She, um, she tried to get away from him. She uh, got out of the car and locked uh, locked the garage door uh, before he uh, before he entered. She's trying to lock him out. Was he able to get back and get inside? Yeah. She said he kicked the door in. Did she also indicate that inside of the residence that she had been sexually assaulted or raped? Yes. Did she say how that had occurred? Yes. How did that occur according to what she told you? Uh, well, it started with um, threats. He, he, he had rummaged. She said he had rummaged through uh, the drawers and the cabinets in the house and, and found a knife uh, and threatened her with a knife. Um, she said uh, that he uh, he was ups upset about not getting more money at the house, and she said that um, he, um, you know, he put his he put his penis in her vagina, and it was. <laughs> Did she say where this had happened at in the house? Yeah, in the living room. On the uh, on the chair in the living room. Sergeant Lomar, we're going to put up People's Exhibit Forty One. Sergeant Lomar, would you say that the chair was this the chair that I'm pointing to? It's a green and white checkered chair that she indicated where this had occurred. Yes. And when you came into the residence, was she sitting near that chair? Yes. Where was she sitting near that chair? On the floor or on a piece of furniture? Mm -hmm. So, um, on the floor in front of that um, plaid green chair. So, right in this area? Yes. And I'm pointing for the record right in front of the chair with a blanket mm -hmm. on the floor. Also, Sergeant yeah. Lohmeyer, when you were there, did you observe um, what we see in the picture is a um, spray can right here to the left of the chair? Yes. As well as further into the kitchen area, a knife that was laying on the floor? Yes. And all of that was present in those locations when you arrived on scene that evening? Yes. Did she also, Ms. Lohman also indicate to you um, there was another individual present with um, the white man with the scruffy hair? Yes. Who did, did she know who that individual was? No. Did you ask her about that person as well to try to get information to find that person as well? Yes. What did she tell you about the person that was with that white man with the scruffy hair? Um, a, sh a shorter black female. Thank you, officer. There's, I have no other questions. Mr. Yon, care to cross-examine? Yes, sir. Uh, officer Lohmeyer, your uh, report here I hold in my hand. Obviously, you know what it is. It's uh, pretty minimal what you've stated here on the record today. Um, what would you say if I made a statement that some of the things you have relayed here today are contrary to maybe what the person... Objection. Improper impeachment. Uh, Mr. Yon, you all sustain the objection. You may rephrase the question. Ask it in a different way. If I stated that the declarant or victim, as some call her, her claims were objection, improper impeachment. I'll sustain the objection, Mr. Yarn. You may ask the question in a different way. If they would, would you bring back up exhibit, I believe it is, the living room with the chair? Apologize. Uh,
right there, yes, sir. In that exhibit 41, you see the chair, obviously. You, you stated that when you entered, the female CL was sitting with her legs displayed to the side. Could you give us some reference as to what side maybe her legs were displayed to? How she was sitting, where her legs were directed at? What? Yeah, I, I guess I can't say which way her legs are pointed, but her legs were, um, both legs were off to one side of her body, sitting on the floor. Most likely probably over towards the kitchen area since there's... I, I don't know. An autumn and whatnot here. I don't know. Um, threats of violence to take the car. You stated she uh, said there was threats of violence. Mm -hmm. um, did she say anything about a weapon? Uh, I don't remember. Um, and the white male, he was scruffy looking with a scruffy beard. Yes. Or scruffy facial hair. hair. Um, you also stated that he began rubbing her crotch, and this is what she's relayed to you. He began rubbing her crotch and then proceeded to take all of her jewelry, her cell phone, I believe it was glasses, um, specifically rings, necklaces, maybe, jewelry. He. I'm so, can you ask the question again? You stated that after rubbing her crotch, he proceeded to take her jewelry, glasses, phone, and whatnot. True? Yeah, I, I said that she told me he took jewelry and a cell phone. That's what I said. And you say she appeared to be in shock and disbelief. Yes. Obviously, I mean, I would think Horrible. anybody would be... Um, and upon entering the, the residence, who else was there at the time? Besides officers? Yes. Uh, initially it was just me and Christina and Deputy Bowden. And, uh, Mr. I, Schmidt wasn't there? Um, family members started coming later. I don't remember which family members were there. But it was just you, Christine, and Deputy Bowden in the beginning, correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm the first responder, so we respond and we're the initial ones on scene. Yes, thank you. Christine, Bowden, and Deputy Lohmeyer were the only ones in the house. Thank you. Um, and, uh... She stated that it was a shorter black female. Yes. That was alleged to be with the defendant myself. Um, did she give any descriptions as to what the shorter black female looked like? Hair, skin? She said shorter black female. That was the end of it with me. And uh, approximately how long were you there, would you say? Uh, I don't remember. She couldn't give a rough estimate, an hour, half an hour? I don't remember. And you, uh, you just relayed a moment ago that other family members started arriving, correct? Yes. And uh, briefly, if you remember how many, maybe female, male? I don't remember. Um, you said you've been working the force for approximately 18 years. Yes. Um, it's a long time. Uh, do you have record by any chance of the approximate time you arrived there? Uh, it will be on my dispatch ticket. Would approximately 6.30? It, if that's on the dispatch ticket, is about that time. And you, uh, when, when officers arrive at a scene, they normally use their radio and acknowledge to dispatch that they have arrived, correct? If the radios work. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, any other measures that you took upon arriving other than just speaking to Wellman? Yeah. Um, 
Well, really my role was to contact the investigators and, and bring them in on it too. So that's what I did. That was my action. And then we continued uh, looking for a vehicle is what I did after that. You secured the scene, obviously, or looked around the scene, maybe? Can you ask me the question again? I'm not sure. I apologize. Right. Did, did you secure the scene, the home or the area around? As much as possible with two people. Um. Um, to the best of your recollection, obviously other officers work with you. To the best of your recollection, could you state the other officers that had arrived after you? Oh. Um. Officer, uh, let's see, be Investigator Miller, uh, Sergeant McMahon, um, uh, Investigator Summers. There might have been others. Uh, that might be on the dispatch ticket as well. And uh, there, there's an there's an important figure I'd like to inquire about. That would be the sheriff at the time, Sheriff Wagner. Mm -hmm. um, was he there on the scene? Yes. And uh, approximately, the best of your recollection, how long after you arrived did he arrive? Or uh, was it before? He, he, no, he arrived fairly quickly after I arrived. I don't remember how many minutes. All right. Uh, Were, were you at the scene when officers helped seal up off the floor? I don't remember. But she stayed on the floor until... I don't remember. Um, upon your arrival, what was CL wearing? I don't remember. Was she wearing clothes? Was she, yes. She was fully clothed? Uh, I would say that, you know, I didn't see bra or underwear. Uh, so as, as far as I was concerned, she was clothed. She was clothed. She had pants. And I don't know what she was wearing. I just, I didn't see bras or underwear. Bottoms or tops, though. She had bottoms. Like, for example. I don't remember if she was wearing a dress, a uh, Pants, I don't remember. But you did say she was clothed. She had some type of clothing on. Thank you. Um, did you observe any blood when you arrived? Uh, I didn't. Thank you. And I, I want to ask you a very specific question. I don't know if I'll be objected to, but in your professional opinion, based on your history as a law officer, when one bleeds, it doesn't just stop and then start up at a later time again, if you are just sitting in one spot. On your, for example, Mr. Jones and Ms. Keck have nothing to do with this question. Mr. Lohmeyer, I did respect it if you- Objection, Your Honor, for opinion. Sustained. Ask the witness questions, Mr. Young. Your Honor, if I may approach the bench, please. You may not. If you need him to look at something, you can give it to the bailiff. No, I'd like to have him been. I'm sorry? I'd like to speak to the judge privately. Do you need a discussion outside the hearing of the jury? If possible. Okay. We will take a brief recess from the jury to the <laughs>
seated. Yeah. on the record, and Mr. Yon, you wanted to address an issue Your Honor, I, hearing of the jury. Yes, Your Honor, we, I, I would have rather approached the bench. It would have been very brief. Um, Mr. Yon, I discussed during pretrials, neither side is going to leave from behind their tables or approach any witness. If yes, there's sir. an exhibit to go to a witness, it's to be handed to the bailiff. He will take it to the witness and then return it. Your Honor, my, my issue, my objection is several times throughout these witness testimonies thus far, witnesses have looked directly over at the state's attorneys for guidance. Mr. Lohmeyer just did a moment ago. Um, I'm the defendant, pro se litigant here asking the question. I don't believe that if I ask a question that is pertinent to this defense in this trial, that a witness need to look over at the state's attorney for direction. And it's happened several times and it's, it's uncalled for your honor. That's all I have. All right. When I, I would ask that a solution be put in place, uh, it's happened several times. Mr. Yon, have you noticed either of the assistant state's attorneys giving an answer to the witness? I, I tried to look and, and catch this time, but no, I have not, Your Honor. Not. Okay, neither has the court. And so where the witness looks while answering questions, I cannot control. But unless the assistant state's attorneys are indicating some kind of answer that they should be giving, there's no reason to basically uphold your objection. So if, if the witness wants to look at you, look at the state, look at the judge, look at the ceiling, they're going to look where they're going to look, okay? Yes, but sir. until it's shown that the assistant state's attorneys are somehow indicating what the answer should be given by that witness, again, there's no control over the, where the witness is looking. Yes, sir. Anything else before we brought bring no. the jury back? No, thank you. Uh, we're going to have the jury brought back in.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. The Senate's report is now ready to meet. Record, uh, Mr. Yon, commencing with this cross examination of this witness. Mr. Yon, further questions? Yes, sir, I still do. Um, Deputy Lohmeyer, you stated you don't remember how, how long you were there or when you left the scene. Um, other than securing the scene, looking for suspects making sure they were nowhere around they were not of a potential threat you proceeded no further correct other than, yeah, can you ask me i'll ask it again i apologize uh, other than speaking to cl at the scene initially securing the scene as you and other officers did you stated and looking for suspects you say you went and looked for suspects correct yes and where did you look for suspects at? really at this point i think every officer was looking for a stolen vehicle yes. um so i was doing that as well the, you're the, and we were looking for a stolen vehicle with a with a suspect that had reportedly raped a woman so really every officer is is kind of looking for that vehicle. Do you remember in what direction you went? You know, I worked the county, so I traveled a lot of the county. I stuck typically closer to Quincy, but I don't remember exactly where I went. And you... 18 years. It's a lot of time, uh, takes a toll on one's memory. You uh, pointed out some very specific details here today as far as the claims placed forth by CL or what she relayed to you. But you don't remember whether she was wearing clothes, or what she was wearing, approximately what she was wearing. Yeah. Um, you just know that she had clothes on. Um, you don't remember the deputies fully. You remember some of them. Um, uh, I'll ask one more question in concern of the deputies arriving after you. Um, Kelsey Miller, you stated that she arrived not too long after you arrived. Yes. Could you give a, an idea of that time? I couldn't. 10 minutes, 3 minutes, half an hour, 20 minutes. All I can say is uh, within the hour, probably. Within the hour. Appreciate it. Um, And when you arrived, I believe I already touched base on this, but when you arrived, it was just you, Christine, and Deputy Bowden, correct? As far as I knew. Mm, mm. Okay. Hey. All right. Mr. Keck, any further questions or Mr. Thank you, Your Honor. Sergeant Lohmeyer, it seemed like where you remember that somebody else made it. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. Um, I, I, uh, I remember that the husband was there. And was that Tim Schmidt? Tim. You knew it was Tim. I knew him as Tim. 
No other questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Any further cross, Mr. Young? No, sir. All right, you may step down. Thank you. Your Honor, we'd ask that Sergeant Lohmeyer be released from his subpoena, please. No objection. We will release Sergeant Lohmeyer from his witness subpoena. Do you have a further witness? Your Honor, the people would call David Joseph. All right, we have that witness. David Joseph. If you'd come forward to the circuit clerk and raise your right hand, she'll swear you in. Right over here. You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give has no ending before this court shall be the truth, the truth, and nothing but the truth. All right, you can have a seat over here to my right and the witness stand. And if you would scoot up close to the microphone in front of you so everybody will be able to hear your answers to the questions. So, Ms. Keck, when you're ready with your questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Sir, could you tell us your name, please? David Joseph. I'm going to have you pull that microphone a little bit closer to you. Can you tell us your name, please? David Joseph. Mr. Joseph, you live in Hannibal, Missouri, is that correct? Correct. On November 9th, 2021, where were you working? At uh, Phillips 66 gas station. In Hannibal? Yes. On that particular evening, um, did two individuals show up to the gas station? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Your basis? I'm, I'm sure a lot of individuals showed up to the gas station. Okay, overruled. Laying the foundation. Specifically, um, those individuals showed up in a white Toyota Avalon, is that correct? Correct. Also on that particular evening, was there video surveillance at the gas station? Yes. Was there specifically video surveillance um, around 8 o'clock in the evening that showed um, what was going on at the gas station? Yes. And that surveillance video captures the outside of the gas station, correct? Yes. It also captures the front door as people come in to the mm -hmm. gas station. And then there's a video surveillance camera that captures um, kind of back side of the gas station where there's some video gambling machines. Is that right? Right. Mr. Joseph, I'm holding up an envelope and smart people's exhibit. Have you seen this before? Yes. And in fact, um, did Mr. Self show you this um, this exhibit before court today? Yes. In people's exhibit 18, is that the video surveillance um, from that night of November 9th, 2021? Yes. And did that video accurately capture what you saw? that night of November 9th, 2021, about 8 o'clock, a little after 8 o'clock in the evening. It did. Your Honor, I'd ask that People's Exhibit 18 be admitted and published for the jury. Any objection? Uh, yes, I do object uh, if they're not going to play it, Your Honor. They are going to play it. Sir. So is there an objection? No. Okay. So People's Exhibit 18 will be admitted without objection and may be published to the jury. Mr. Joseph, we're first going to show the front, uh, the camera pointing towards the actual gas station pumps, okay? Uh, before we play it, up here in the right-hand corner, pointing it says 11-09-2021-08-08-55 p.m. Is that an accurate time, November 9, 2021, 8.08 and 55 seconds p.m. Is that accurate for what had occurred and what you personally observed? Yes. And before we play, just real quick, right here in front of the pumps, we see a street. Tell us what street that is. I think that's Mark Twain Avenue. And Hannibal. Mm -hmm. And if we can go ahead and play that part of the and Mr. Joseph, we see a white car that's just pulled up to the pumps. Is that the white car we're talking about? Yes.
Mr. Joseph as we were watching that, we were seeing individuals get out of that car and go inside the gas station. Is that correct? Yes. As we discussed, there's also a camera that catches that front door. Correct. And what we have here on the screen is this, um, the angle of the camera that shows that front door where we saw the individuals going in and out. Yes. If we can play that video now, please. Mr. Joseph, you also indicated... Your Honor, if I may, I'd have to object real quick. Um, I'd like to know where the full edition of that video is. That's not the full edition of what was just played. That's clipped to shorten that extremely... Uh, well, enough. Um, as you saw, the male suspect myself come right in the door and right back out. That's not the actual video, Your Honor. Mr. Yon, I don't understand your objection. Your Honor, uh, I object to that video being clipped and cut, as a lot of things have been clipped and cut in this case. I have the video right here. I will find it, Your Honor, and I can surely approach and show it to you. All right, so I'm going to overrule your objection. If you want to play a full video for the jury to watch, the state is simply showing and asking this witness about what they believe is important in the video. If you have it available, you can use that in cross-examination or as you see fit. Yes, sir. No objections overruled. Ms. Keck, you may continue. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Joseph, you indicated there's also a camera that captures um, these video machines over here. Is that right? Right. That we're seeing on the screen. And we see here, we see an individual here that's wearing a black hoodie and gray pants. Right. Tell us who that is. That's me. That's you. And part of your job, right, is just to kind of walk around and check on people, right? Right. And we see that you're going over here to this individual that's got something strapped over his shoulder. Was that the same individual, male individual, that we just saw coming in and out of those front doors? Yes, ma'am. And was that the same male individual that you saw coming in and out of that white car? Correct. When you went over to that individual, um, did you have any conversation with him? Uh, briefly. Was that because of something you saw? Yeah, uh, it was a Ziploc bag of money. And did that concern you seeing a Ziploc bag of money? Yes. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of money. Wow. Oh. In fact, were you worried about the man that something could happen to him? Yeah, like if he was in like where I grew up at, I'm like, hey, you could have a problem if somebody saw you with that, you know? And was that a Ziploc bag of money that he had out of that purse? Yes. Mr. Jones, if we can play that video.
Mr. Joseph, um, that male that you can see that we were just talking about that you talked to um, over at that video machine um, with the big lot of cash in the back, describe him for you. It's kind of hard to see how he looked. Can you describe him for the jury? Um, I know he had the hat on. He had a red uh, red beard. Um, Was he white or black? He's a white guy. Mr. Joseph, I'm going to have the security officer here hand you what we've marked as People's Exhibit 76. <clears throat> is that a screenshot of um, the video that one of the videos that we saw, um, the second video Mr. Jones played, of that white male with the red beard coming into the gas station? This is him. And you see also on that picture um, the purse that he had over his shoulder. Is that correct? Correct. Right. We can put that up on it. Your Honor, I guess the People's Exhibit 76 be admitted and published for the jury, please. Any objection, Mr. Young? No objection. All right. People, or People's Exhibit 76 is admitted without objection, may be published for the jury. And um, it's a little pixelated in here, but you can see on here, you can see, as you described it, the white male, the red beard, and the satchel over his shoulder. Is that correct? Correct. And is that how he looked that night at November 9th, 2021? Yes, ma'am. Was he also that night wearing, when we sit here, these white shoes? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no other questions. Mr. Yon, any cross examination? Yes, I do. <coughs> you stated uh, yes in reference to showing up in a white Toyota Avalon, true? Yes. Uh, you didn't go out in the parking lot and observe the decals on that car, did you? Or no. The, you obviously can't see the lettering from the camera, correct? Correct. No, it was the car. Um, you're obviously here to testify to what you observed at a convenience store, true? True. Um, do you, I, I want to ask you a question concerning these matters. Do you know anything, any facts or anything about the case ref, in reference what it is about? No, other than what I saw. And that's the case there? I don't know. You don't know what the case pertains to? Other than what I saw at the gas station? Um. There's a crime that was supposed to have taken place before this. You don't know what that is. Objection. Asked and answered. <coughs> I'll overrule the objection. He may answer if he knows. Explain that again. Say it again. Um, you wouldn't know anything about what, why, why we were here today. The charges that we're here today. No, other than what happened at the gas station. So, you uh. You um, were on video, obviously, several different times, all these clips, and you were also on an officer's video. Objection. Assumes facts, not in evidence. All right, so we need to stick with what's in evidence at this point, Mr. Young, so I will sustain that objection. Yes, sir, uh, you're not lying, are you? Objection. Sustained. The witness knows what we're here on today. Um, objection, Your Honor. I will sustain. Mr. Yon, you're to ask the witness questions. That's what cross-examination involves. Do you remember approximately what time that was? I didn't know. It was nighttime. You did not know? And uh, you state you saw a Ziploc bag of money, correct? A bag of money, yes. A bag of money, or was it a Ziploc bag? Hocks a bag. It was a plastic bag? I believe so. Anywhere on that video, can we play the video again, please? The video of the entrance into the, into the uh, gas station. The one where he's going in and out? Yes. The one, the one where the suspect, the alleged suspect, myself, is going in and out. This one? It's on the screen. Yes.
that off and uh, if you would go to the gambling machine video your honor does the court want me to stop the video at this point That's what mr young's requesting you to do if you would do so to uh, assist him please You just reviewed that video again, correct? Correct. And did you see a plastic bag in that video? No. Bag? No. Um, in reference to the first video, the, the defendant entering the gas station, you were behind the desk, correct? Correct. Um, and the defendant obviously went directly to the left. Mm -hmm. uh, this video that you just were showing uh, the actual happening, the actual real time, the defendant was in there a lot longer than that, true? True. Um, you approached the defendant or the area that the defendant was in after entering the gas station, true? True. And you did not see a plastic bag or a Ziploc bag full of money in either of them? Uh, not immediately. When did you see it? Because uh, as after he was there and he pulled it out of the bag that he had around his person. Sir, we're directly on camera. Mm -hmm. And you just stated you saw no plastic bag full of money. I need a direct answer. Your Honor, he just answered the question. Thank you. Objection, I'll sustain the objection. And follow up with questions, Mr. Young. And, uh, I'm not going to go into your criminal history. It's not extensive. Objection. Reynolds. There isn't. Is, Mr. Joseph does not have any criminal history. I will be sustaining the objection. Hmm. Beg to differ. Um, and Mr. Yan, if you have evidence of such, then you'll need to attempt to impeach this witness with such. But I will direct the jury to disregard your follow-up statement as it is not evidence. Your Honor, I'm not going to take the time to waste the jurors, the jurors' time at this moment. I did receive such a... Objection, Your Honor. And again, Mr. Yon, if yes, you sir. have the evidence to impeach the witness, then you are given time and the... I do not to wish to... Him. I do not wish to impeach him, Your Honor. Uh, right. I wish to ask him a question. Yes. In reference to criminals, you've seen criminals in, in your lifetime, correct? Um, I, I believe so. Yeah. You said where you live, or common knowledge, you know, city, you know, Georgia, Atlanta. Um, 
You've seen criminals in your lifetime. You saw two suspects in them videos. Two suspects enter that jail, or excuse me, I apologize, enter that gas station. The first one, she was wearing a pink hoodie. A pink hoodie. How did she appear? I guess pretty normal. She appeared normal? She didn't appear rambunctious or maybe even high. Uh, no, she did seem... Uh, how to put it? Uneasy towards the end of the video. Like she was anxious. And the other person who you see on your screen right now in a pause spot, he is holding cash in his hand. Um, he was carefree. He was normal. Was he not? You saw him in the video. I don't know. Um, talking about as from my point of view? Yes. Um, I guess. I guess. All right. Your Honor, uh, I have no more questions for this man here. Can you redirect? Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Jones, if you um, could put on the screen what a screenshot that we have pulled from the second video, I believe actually Mr. Jones was just referring to. In this video, when you pause it, right at this point that we have on the screen, you actually do see, as Mr. John noted, the individual pulling something out of the purse that appears to be cash in a bag, correct? Correct. And when you were over at those video poker machines with that white male with the red beard, you also could see him pulling something out of his purse that you can't see in the video because his back is to the video, correct? Right, right. Thank you, sir. No other questions. Any further cross, Mr. Young? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, if you'll play the video of the gambling machines again, please. And you pause right there for a moment. What is the defendant doing at that machine? Putting money into the dollar bill slot. Putting putting money into the bill slot, correct. And he walked directly in, obviously, and went straight to the machine, true? Yes. And he directly proceeded to put money in. Right. You cannot see his other hand. You know that he had a bag on him, correct? Correct. Correct to both questions? I apologize. What was the first you part cannot, of the other question? You cannot see his other hand. Right. And you know that he had a bag on him. Right. But that bag was not clear, nor was it Ziploc. Right. And he's directly at the machine putting cash in. Mm -hmm. So that could be cash from just a bag or potentially a pocket, even, Drew. Uh, no, uh, the person pulled it out of the bag. You're standing to the right. The camera comes from the right. That's just the part of the video probably before he pulled it out of the bag. And it's not a Ziploc bag or a clear plastic bag, is it? I believe it was a plastic bag that he pulled out of the brown or gold you bag. Believe. Thank you. It, your honor any redirect no your honor thank you all right we, can this witness be discharged yes your honor that would be our request all right so you are discharged from your witness subpoena and free to go thank you we've been at it approximately an hour and a half this may be a good chance to take a recess for 10 minutes we'll recess until 10:30. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
Thank you. All right, so court will be in recess for that 10 minute break. Anyone need the facilities? Please do so. Thank you, Your Honor.
pertinent information that the witness intended to testify to. Uh, I've been disclosed discovery statements. However, I have received none from McKeith Kenny. I have that portion of the documents right here. Um, I have nothing from Keith. Keith Kenny, that would be a Brady violation, uh, a pill issue. Keith Kenny. 
Mr. Kinney, what do you do for a living? I'm now retired. I was the Illinois Department of Corrections for 31 years and 10 months. The last 10 years of that being assigned to the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force. As a member of the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force, what were your responsibilities? Apprehending fugitives with warrants. And you said you did that for approximately 10 years? Yes, sir. Were you working for the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force in November of 2021? Yes, sir. And in November, specifically November 9th and 10th of 2021, was there a specific person that you were looking for? Yes, sir. Who was that person? Uh, Bradley on the city. At that point, did you just have a name Bradley on? Yes, I didn't know him other than the name. And you already identified him, but the Bradley on that was eventually taken to custody, is that the same person who's sitting here in court? Correct. Your Honor, we'd ask the record that the witnesses identified the defendant. On November 10th, 2021, did you receive information about where the defendant might have been located? We received information that he was from the Springfield area. Um, the guys on the task force from Quincy were working this side of the state. Uh, so my team and myself decided to stay in Springfield and work some angles over there. At some point, was there an address that was associated with the defendant that you learned that the, the defendant was either at that address or might be at that address? That is correct. And that address was 1906 East Cornell Street, Springfield. Is that right? That's correct. You went to that address to attempt to apprehend the defendant? I, myself. When I say you, you and other members of the U.S. Marshals. Yes, correct. And was the defendant, in fact, apprehended at that location? Yes, he was in the backyard. <coughs> Glass water or anything. Okay. Thank you, when you arrived at that location, was the defendant already in handcuffs? He was. He was prone down on the ground in handcuffs. When you say prone, lying on the ground? Lying, yes, on his stomach on the ground. When he was lying on the ground in handcuffs, did you notice anything about him, anything that he was wearing or had on him? He had a purse that was wrapped, the strap was wrapped over the shoulder, and then when the handcuffs were, I did not handcuff him, but when I walked around there, he was laying there, the purse was through the handcuffs, so. Did you cut that purse off of him? I did. I pulled my pocket knife out and I cut the purse off. That purse, did it appear to be a brown or gold color purse? Yeah, beige brown, I would call it. And did you look at the items that were in that purse as well? I did. Your Honor, if I could have Ms. Keck pull up People's Exhibit 59 on the screen. It's already been introduced. Now on the screen. 
screen is People's 62, photograph of that same person looking down into that purse. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. And on the right side of the purse, you see a strap that's been cut. You pulled us, you cut that strap. Is that right? I in fact did cut that. Yes. And inside that purse is a. <laughs> In his pocket, people exhibit 60, is, is this some of the items that you found? Yes. And specifically in the middle of that picture, is there a silver and white razor? Yes. And on the screen here, people exhibit 61, is that that same razor? Yes, that's the same. Found in his pocket? In his pocket. I pulled it out separately. Marshal Kenny, uh, you did not write a report yourself, did you? No, sir. Is there a reason you may not have written a report? It wasn't my case. Uh, you positively identified myself as a defendant uh, here in court. However, uh, 
Have you ever seen him without a beard? Seen you without a beard? Yes. No. It was that easy to identify him with loss of hair and no beard. Yes. Um, you state that uh, I was apprehended in 1906 East Cornell and you were obviously doing surveillance, correct? I was actually at a store called Jamal's, which was a couple blocks away. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Yes. We had information that you had stopped there that day, so I was reviewing video footage with the owner of the store, and during that time, a call came out that you were spotted in the backyard exiting a camper. At that point, my partner and myself drove over there. And the time I got there, you were already in handcuffs on the ground in the backyard. <laughs> You, you stated that you observed the items in the purse or you looked through them briefly? Yes, sir. Um, could you state them items for the record again? Just based off your memory? Uh, there was money, there was some checks, um, and there was some other jewelry. Uh, you didn't pull them out and take photographs of them? No, my initial search was to make sure you had any weapons on them. Uh, would any of your officers uh, in the U.S. Marshal Surveillance team that were there that day, would they have taken any pictures? I don't believe they would have. You uh, state that you reached in my pockets to pull items out to obviously check to see if I had weapons. Sure. And, uh, You stated that you pulled a rosary out of my pockets. True? True. And what condition was that rosary in? Uh, it seemed intact. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, ordinarily, if a person had a rosary, wouldn't they be wearing it? Ordinarily, I would think. And uh, as you said, it was intact. If a person was wearing, or if a person had a rosary that was not intact, they probably wouldn't keep it in their immediate possession and just hold it through. Based off just your general. I well, think if it was broke, maybe you'd keep it in your pocket, but if it was intact, you'd wear it around your neck. Exactly, and it was intact. It appeared to be intact, as you said. senior master trooper uh, with the Illinois State Police. Um, for the last 11 and a half years, I was a crime scene investigator. Can you tell me what a crime scene investigator is, what your, your 
job is as a crime scene investigator? Uh, crime scene investigators for the Illinois State Police um, were all sworn <coughs> troopers. Um, we process crime scenes. Um, we process them throughout the state. We have regions and sections that we do that with. Um, we process for local agencies. We are giving specific training, certifications, and equipment, and we're free to use for the local agencies, state agencies, at Jesus. And I will process, document, uh, and collect items of evidence from various scenes being uh, property crimes, such as a burglary, or crimes against a person, like a battery or a uh, home invasion. Uh, in a death investigation, there should be a variety of different things. I'll collect those items. I'll uh, give that back to the agency that's investigating it, or I'll transport it to the labs for, which is our ISP labs. Again, free. They just have to wait on the results. Fair to say that some local agencies don't have crime scene investigators. Correct. And so the Illinois State Police and you, when you were working there, were there to help support the local agencies who aren't able to have a crime scene investigator because either the county board hasn't given them money in their budget for that or they're not able to do that. Yes, sir. In this case, the Adams County State, or the Adams County Sheriff's Office did not have a crime scene investigator. Is that right? To the best of your knowledge? That's correct. And they asked the Illinois State Police, and specifically you, to, to help with the documentation of that crime scene. Yes, sir. Is part of that to take photographs of, of various scenes? Yes, sir. And did you take multiple photographs, uh, both at the scene and then uh, later on of a vehicle that was later recovered? Yes, sir. Your Honor, if I could have the bailiff approach the witness with people's exhibits 53, 54, 55, 56, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, and 75. I'm going to ask you to look at all those photographs and tell me when you've had a chance to go through those photographs. Again, people's exhibit 35 is just a photograph that, that you took. Yes, sir. And it shows basically the entrance into the garage, fair to say? Yes, sir. People's 36. Can you tell us what we're looking at in people's 36? 
that is in front of the garage. Um, so the garage in the front of the house is on the east side. Uh, the front of it is the east. That is directly east of the garage. And you see the, uh, the tire marks. Yeah, the tire marks in the, uh, So the tire marks uh, going through the, the grass and that, um, I, from what I understand, struck the shrub uh, and then goes out into the uh, drive. People's 37, the interior of that garage. Yes, sir. People's 38. This would be the door going from the garage into the uh, the house. Yes, sir. Uh, did you notice damage to that door? Yes, sir. And you also notice um, shoe prints on that door. Yes, sir. We'll come back to the shoe prints in a minute. People's thirty-nine. <coughs> Again, the interior door showing that damage. Yes, sir. And damage on the wall as well. Yes, sir. People's forty. Close up of that damage on the wall. Yes, sir. People's 41, is this the interior of the house? Yes, sir. And we see a can and a knife, correct? Yes, sir. And both that can and knife were later collected. We'll talk about those in a minute. Next slide, please. Again, a close up of that can in People's 42. Also, a red substance on the floor. Yes, sir. Equals 80, a different view of that showing that can at temp marker five and at temp marker six, uh, that red substance stain on the floor. Yes, sir. Equals 81 is a close up shot down view showing again that red substance on the floor. Yes, sir. Equals 43 on the screen shows the knife that was recovered at temp marker four. Yes, sir. And again, a close up of that knife and the temp marker. Yes, sir. And when we say temp marker, we're talking about this yellow identification. That it, it's, can you explain why why we use temp markers? So, especially in a, in a large scene, it can get lost. I take hundreds of pictures and I collect a lot of stuff. So. For certain things I'm going to collect, I'll put a tent marker, which I like to use numbers. Um, for other things, I might use letters. So uh, then I go through the scene, and as I go through, I try to make the numbers flow. So as I collect items, like tent marker number one was a pair of pants, um, I also put that in the definition, the description of on the evidence sticker, so that um, as I go through, our system, the beast, uh, will number the exhibits a certain way, and I can't help that. The agency is allowed to renumber those those exhibits their way, but that tent marker and that description will always be with that item of evidence. So, so it's first to describe. If an item of evidence goes from you to the agency to the lab, if it's analyzed at the lab too, each one of those things may have a different agency number associated. Exhibit number. Exhibit number. Yes, sir. And the tent marker is there to help us keep track of where everything is. Yes, sir. And people's 45, again, is that can uh, at tent marker 5. Yes, sir. People's 46 is a close-up of that same can that was recovered. Yes, sir. Can you tell us what we're looking at in people's exhibit 47? Uh, tent marker 8 and tent marker 9. Uh, they are both marking uh, footwear impressions on the floor. So, when you and dust, when you examined the crime scene, you were able to see foot marks in that hall. Footwear impressions. Footwear impressions. Yes, sir. And you documented those, and we'll see some photos of those later on. Yes, sir. People's forty-eight is a photograph inside a bedroom. Is that right? Yes, sir. Documents what you saw 
when you took that photograph? Yes, sir. Peoples 49 is in the basement of that house, is that right? Yes, sir. And it shows a gray door, door to a safe. Yes, sir. Peoples 50. Again, a different view of that same door? Yes, sir. And in the course of your investigation, you did something with that door as well, and we'll talk about that. Correct? Yes, sir. From People's Exhibit 42 that we have now have on the screen, there is a, a can that is located on that screen, correct? Yes, sir. Covered by you, correct? Yes, sir. And it was placed in this brown paper evidence bag. Yes, sir. You can see on the front of it that it said one metal 409 spray can recovered from floor of kitchen living room, correct? That's not my sticker. But the other one's my sticker. That's your sticker. Sorry. One metal 409 spray can recovered from floor of kitchen living room marked with tint marker number five. Yes. After you recovered this can. What did you do with it? Where did you? Uh, I placed it in that bag, and at the end of processing this scene, uh, all the evidence went back to the agency. When you processed, or when you got that can, were there certain things that you were interested in it being tested for? Yes. And tell me what that was. So, due to the nature of this situation, I was advised what um, it was a, that particular can was used. So um, there was a chance for DNA and fingerprints to be uh, taken from that can. So replacing it in paper protects it for DNA and uh, has a shield. So when it went to the lab, I was going to have the lab decide what would be the best way to process. Because if it's processed for latent prints, then uh, that could damage for DNA. So if DNA needs to be done first, it needs to be done, but then they need to know not to damage stuff for fingerprints. Okay. DNA and fingerprints? Yes, sir. And when you collected it, are there steps that you take to make sure there's no cross-contamination, things like that? Yes, sir. Wear gloves, things like that? Yes, sir. Uh, and you did that in this case? Yes, sir. Your Honor, we did ask the people to take three to be introduced to that. No objection. People's Exhibit 50 is that safe door that we talked about. Can you tell me what you did with regard to the safe door in this investigation? So the safe door I marked as tip marker 13. I um, used oblique lighting, which is side lighting at an angle, uh, to look for any obvious fingerprints on that door and around the door. But um, Due to this incident, I uh, was advised that there was a lot of pulling and maybe manipulation of that door, which would have rubbed fingerprints. So I swabbed the handle um, for touch DNA. Didn't find any fingerprints. Correct. Uh, but you swabbed the door for DNA. Yes, sir. Tell me what that process is, how you swab a door for DNA. So I have gloves. Um, normally, what I uh, normally do whenever I swap for DNA is I'll open up a package, uh, a fresh package of swabs. It looks like large Q-tips. There's two in the package. I'll open up the top of it and just expose the Q-tip aspect of that swab. And I'll mo moisten one of those Q-tip tips with still water. And I use fresh distilled water. I just open it for this. I put the drops on there and I rub both those swabs on that handle. And then I place that, uh, the tips of those Q-tips in a envelope, I'll snap them off and seal it up so I've never come in contact with those. And then I place those, uh, that in another envelope and seal that up and um, place this. And I'm 
holding people's exhibit five that appear to be here are the envelope with your sticker on it that says envelope containing swabs, two swabs of safe handle marked with tint marker 13. Yes, sir. Your Honor, we'd ask the people's exhibit five to be introduced to the Any objection? No. People's exhibit five is in the objection. I'm not going to put it back up on the screen, but we saw that picture of the blood that was on the floor by that green chair. Do you remember that photograph? Yes, sir. Red substance. Looked like substance. Did you also swab that location? Yes, sir. And you used the same steps that you just described? Yes, sir. And you put it in envelope, and does that appear to be that envelope? Yes, sir. It says envelope containing RBLS, swabs recovered from RBLS, red blood-like substance. Yes, sir. I'm not allowed to call blood blood. On the floor of the kitchen and living room, marked with tent marker number six. Yes, sir. Your Honor, we'd ask that People's Exhibit 79 be admitted into evidence. I'm sorry, you've got People's Exhibit 79? 79, correct. Any objection? People's Exhibit 79 is admitted with no objection. During the course of your investigation, did you learn that investigators were looking for a particular car? Yes, sir. And that car was eventually found? Yes, sir. In Springfield, Illinois? Yes, sir. Did you do anything with regard to that car and specifically pick it up? Yes, sir. Tell me what you did with regard to that car. I'm the one that processed that vehicle. So initially I took photographs of that car, referenced the fingerprints. The exterior of the car, I used a black powder, and I dusted for prints on each of the doors, including the trunk. I want to show you what's been introduced into evidence as People's Exhibit 51. I have that on the screen. And does that appear to be the car that you processed in relationship to this case? Yes, sir. A white Toyota Camry, license plate ABS 1006. Yes, sir. Toyota Avalon. And you shared with us that you processed it, the outside of the fingerprints. Yes, sir. Again, explain that process for me, how you do that. So specifically for this car, it was locked. So we were going to have to use some manipulations to try to get in. So I wanted to try to get all the evidence from the exterior that I could before we tried to do that. So what I did was I used black powder, and I actually dust a thin coat of black powder on those areas of the driver's door, the back passenger door, the trunk, the back passenger door, and the front passenger door. In those areas on top and around the top of the hood area of those doors for latent prints. You dusted for prints? Yes. When you dusted the car for prints, were you able to find some prints? Yes, sir. Now your job is not to analyze those prints or to confirm who those prints belong to or anything. That's the last job, right? Correct. I'm just a collector. You find them. Yes, sir. And in this case, you found some prints. And if you could pull up People's 54. People's 54 is the driver's side of that white Toyota Avalon that we previously saw with the license plate. Is that right? Yes, sir. Can you get your laser pointer? Can you show me where you found prints on this car, on this side? So on this side, if you see the dark stuff, that is all the black powder. But when I find prints, I like to use a dry erase marker. And on this case, it was black. And I will actually mark them. One, two, three, four. And on five is over here. And then I do more photographs because a lot can happen between trying to lift them. So then I'll take analytical photos, which are in its own value evidence. And did you also find, if you go to the next slide, again, here we see the driver's side door handle. Is that right? That's number two. And if you go to the next slide, People's 56, we're looking at the area between the 
passenger and, and back seat? Yeah, this one is, I think, number eight. I think it's a phone. Oh, correction, that's number nine. Is it nine or eight? Um, there's a, there'll, there'll be a number on it, but yeah, that's on the, the passenger side. There's a, there's a palm here and there's some prints here. And you collected those lists and processed them for them to be sent to the lab. Yes, sir. And I, hand, I have here in my hand people who did it. 13. Uh, it's one sealed envelope containing uh, nine white back cards bearing developed plain prints recovered from the exterior of that vehicle. Is that correct? That yeah, that's not my sticker. I think mine's on the back. It's a good thing we have tent markers. So, with a DVD uh, with JPEG and RAW images. Do you take photographs of them as well? Yes, sir. Your Honor, we'd ask the people's 13 be admitted into that. When you processed the scene, you also shared with us that you found footprint or foot impressions, shoe impressions, uh, at various locations on the door and in the hall. Is that right? Yes, sir. Tell me the process of collecting those. How do you collect those? So, uh, the footwear impressions <coughs> bearing on uh, the substrate that they're made out of, these are dust, and the object that they're on uh, matters on how I'm going to collect them. In this particular scene, I again photograph everything uh, analytically, which means if I don't lift those prints, these images are of uh, evidential value that the lab can process those, those impressions. But I not only took images, but I lifted these using gel lifts. So initially here, I'm just documenting that there's footwear impressions on the store, and there I am. With those, <laughs> um, shining, again, the oblique light, the side lighting, that uh, just totally enhances those footprint impressions. And you said you took a gel lift. What's a gel lift? So a gel lift uh, comes in two different colors. They can be either white or black. In this particular scene, I used a black gel lift, which is basically like a rubber-coated, sticky, um, kind of a rectangular um, substance kind of like a rubbery tile. And over the top of that, there's a clear um, coat cover. You peel off that clear cover, and then you place that um, gel on the object. Uh, it works great for dust. So uh, in this case, I stuck it to the door and um, squeezed out the air bubbles, left it on there for um, just a couple of seconds, and then I lifted it off. You did that with? These two impressions? Yes, sir. And go to the next slide. And people 68, that's a close up of those two impressions? Yes, sir. 69. And again, this impression as well? Yes, sir. You talked about doing it in an analytical way so that there's some evidentiary value. Is this one of the photographs that you're talking about showing that it, it, it could be used by the lab because it has? Uh, the scale on it. I, I use a scale and I also use a special lens on my camera, a Mac lens, and there's no distortion with that. So it's it's not like the 55 that normal people are just taking pictures. It's a one for one lens. So every image with it is, is equal as long as it's 90 degrees. And with these circles here, you can tell that it was taken at 90 degree angle. You shared with us the uh, the gel lift. Is this one of the gel lifts that you're talking about? Yes, sir. 
the black substance in it, the sticky substance, and you, you pull it off the wall. This was it looks like tent marker two, is that right? Yes, sir. So it would have been one of the ones from the door. It was the one next to the handle. The one next to the handle that we just saw. Yes, sir. At the bottom right, it says Reebok, right? Yes, sir. Next slide, please. And then tent marker nine and eight. Tell us about tent marker nine and eight. So tent marker nine and eight are uh, marking two footwear impressions that uh, I was gonna lift. And if you look right here, there's a little mark here, and there's one right there, little bitty black mark up. And I think there's one right here and one right here. I, uh, whenever I'm walking through a scene initially, so I don't destroy any evidence, or more suspected footwear that might be potential evidence. Again, with a, a dry erase marker. And I'll just put a little mark there so I don't step on that later. So those are documenting uh, footwear impressions I'm getting ready to lift or document. Again, this would be a close-up of tent marker eight that we just saw showing that, that dust that you talked about for the, uh, the, the footwear impression, correct? And you can see the black marks I put on the, the uh, floor. Oh, you can't, yeah, close up. People's, Again, this would be tip marker eight, like you see in the upper right-hand corner, and it's the footwear impression that we just saw uh, on the floor, right? Yes, sir. But in the gel left pattern. Yes, sir. And, and with the oblique lighting, sometimes the gel lift makes it better. And on the bottom heel of that shoe, we see the word Reebok again. Correct, sir? Now, it's not your job to compare the shoe to anything else? No, sir. It's not your job to analyze the impression or anything like that. Your job is just to collect. Yes, sir. And that's what you collected, and that's what you did on that day. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Oh, I apologize, Your Honor. People's Exhibit 4, you collected, these are the gel prints and the footwear impressions that you collected from the crime scene that day, correct? In the DVD where they're all in cheap packages. Yes, sir. Your Honor, we ask that People's Exhibit 4 be introduced to that anyway. No objection. Thank you, Your Honor. I apologize. Now I have no more questions. Any questions? Ms. Field, it's that easy. It's that simple. This procedure, correct? I would not call it easy. I wouldn't either. What I call it even harder is to find only one footprint. Objection, Your Honor. Of all the Are people in there this home. Mr. Young, I've got to address the objection you put on the board, please. So, Mr. Jones, what's the grounds for the objection? It's argumentative, Your Honor. Sustained. Apologize, Ms. Field. Uh, these are the impressions and the prints you've lifted, correct? Correct. No more other than this? Not correct. Okay, can you tell us? Can you shed some light on the other ones that you may have? Um, we did not show tip marker nine. Uh, that was a different impression than the Nike. Um, so I, I did lift a different one besides that Reebok. You lifted a Nike. Do you I, remember? I, I don't know if it was a Nike or not, but it was a, a tip marker nine. So. Uh. Tip marker nine, it is the exact same impression as tip marker eight. Um, Your Honor, I don't have the ability to show it right now, but I have it right here on the, it's directly next to tip marker eight. It's the exact same one, it's no different. Objection, um, Your Honor, what is this uh, defendant is seeking to testify? Tim 
marker answers. Sent marker nine and sent marker eight. And then were the only impressions you lived with as far as fear and sickness. Objection, Your Honor, it's not what Ms. testified to. She she also testified she took gel prints from the door where the door was kicked out. Well, I'll sustain the objection and you want to rephrase the question. I apologize again. I'm obviously not a professional. You only is it is it true that you only lifted an abundance of prints, but only from one brand of a shoe? No. Uh, could you possibly shed some light on the other how many different brands you lifted? Well, like I said, the light, if you look at the gel on tip marker nine. There is a difference, and if you look in the tent marker eight, um, with the the Nike, there's actually another impression over the top of that. And uh, throughout the whole scene, as you said, you do it in an analytical way. Uh, throughout the whole scene, these were the only prints you lifted. Yes. Ms. Field, uh, you arrived approximately, I believe it was 9.01 or 9.08 p.m. to the scene. I arrived at 8.59. 8.59, okay, I apologize. Not too much of a difference. Um, are you, were you, Provided with the information of who had been in the home at the time? Or how many? During the incident or after the incident? Are you talking about both? Both, all together. Yes. Um, and to your best remembrance, do you remember about how many? I wouldn't ask for a specific number. I know myself. I just wish that you'd give a range of number of people that were I was told that there was a male and female sus suspects um, the female victim uh, her husband came home um, some of her children came after the incident um, at least I would assume more than one I don't know and uh, then there would be officers that walked through the scene um, some deputies and that's who I know that was on scene at the time. Or before I arrived on scene. That's approximately 15 people. And these are still the only friends you lived. I wouldn't say 15, but uh, yes, those are still the only friends that I lifted, yes. And uh, were there any other deputies who arrived on the scene during your time there? Yes, sir. Uh, do you remember by any chance? Um, I had them stay outside. The uh, one that did the walkthrough with me was uh, Deputy Ruth Fode. Fode. Um, she's the one that did the initial. I don't have groups that come in with me. She was there initially at the scene, and so she initially walked through the scene with me under my direction. And, uh, if, you, if you would give me one second. Uh, you, uh, you did ask a deputy who all had been in the home upon your arrival, correct? Right? Yes, sir. And uh, the deputy obviously said so. Objection, Your Honor, as to what the officer said. Sustain the objection. There were several. That would be an interpretation. Um, I, I, I found out who went through the scene. Uh, I also got, uh, if you're worried about other footwear impressions, why I didn't collect those, I uh, received images of those other subjects that were in this, inside the, the house, and that is in my report. 
And those would be? <coughs> the victim, the uh, victim's husband, the family members that walked through there. I was able to determine deputies normally wear a certain type of boot, um, different, different um, brands, but it's pretty consistent. And I am, uh, pretty well trained to do footwear impressions. In fact, I train my agency as well as other agencies. So I'm pretty consistent. Yes, uh, we'll give you one moment. Uh, someone relayed to you, and, and this is in reference to the safe, Someone related to you that there was a lot of pulling on this floor? So yeah, I would say manipulation. Uh, reportedly, people tried to get in it without the uh, co combination. Yes, and uh, you were not able to identify any fingerprints at all? That is correct. I did not observe any specific prints. And uh, what portions on that safe did you dust? Was that, was that I did not dust anything on that safe. If I dusted on the safe, I would have contaminated the DNA. Yes, Thank you. Uh, you used the light to observe. Only clay, yes. yes, sir. Um, I ask you about the Q-tips quickly. These Q-tips are they normal size Q-tips? Are they the swabs? Yes, the swabs. Um, they aren't your normal Q-tip. They are um, the heads are about the same as a normal Q-tip. But then um, they can either have a, a plastic stick or a, um, a really thin uh, wooden stick. Uh, so lengthwise, they're approximately 8 to 10 inches. I've never really measured one. And you, uh, your functions don't involve the actual testing? That is correct. Uh, in reference to the can, the uh, 409 can, uh, you stated earlier something along the lines of you were given information on the particular situation this can was used, utilized. Uh, could you shed some light on that? Uh, how were, what was the particular situation? I was advised that the victim was uh, forcibly sexually assaulted and that um, the male suspect um, sprayed the uh, 409 carpet cleaner um, in and on the victim during the act. So, and uh, you were not relayed any information about the penetration? No, and it, but that would not have affected the way I would have collected it. Oh, uh, in reference to the can, when you dust, um, does that preserve the print? It would enhance the print, but I did not dust the can. You did not dust the can? No, sir, that would have damaged any DNA. Um, I just collected the can, I just picked up the can and put that in the uh, paper bag. That way that the lab can determine what was the best way to process that. So the lab would have been able to dust it at a later time if they decided to? If they, so, if, they, if they so choose to dust it, but the lab has got other means available to them, especially in a controlled environment like the lab, they could use chemical enhancements and things like that. But if that was going to be going to DNA first, that would need to go to DNA first before that would be done. Uh, and then they could, I don't know what they use to process that. That would be something you need to ask the scientists. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Jones, any redirect? No, Your Honor, thank you. We ask that the witness be released from her.
Jones or Ms. Pick as your next witness? It will be a little bit longer and we'll probably make more time to do that. Why don't we break for lunch? Judge, I'm not sure what witnesses he's referring to. I know that there was a request that was made with regard to a witness who is currently in the Adams County Jail. My understanding is that that witness declined to be interviewed by the defendant. That's my understanding. I have not heard. Uh, I have not heard that in person, but that is my understanding of the conversation that was had. At least it was passed on, and they are waiting, either waiting for a response or the board that that person has said. Um, that's that's all I know. A witness. Does not have to speak with Mr. Yon if they don't want to, Your Honor. That's, that's
That's what we're doing. Your Honor, the witnesses would be uh, Michael Cameron, Travis Wiley, my father, uh, Karen Blackledge. The only request that I was aware of was made with regard to Karen Blackledge. Michael Cameron is not in the custody of Adams County Jail anymore. Growing boy. I gotta have a break. I <laughs> got to have breaks. <laughs>
What are you doing? You got to take that down. With I got to take all the middle exhibits down with Because okay. those are my responsibility yeah, after that. Okay. Well, we don't about this. Do you place. shut the lights down, Donnie? Is that what you do? Um, or leave them on? Just leave them on, just in case Thank somebody you. walks in uh -huh. here and they should. I'm going to lock it down so we're good to go. Yeah. And then I'll just take her out. Okay. I'm almost done. Um, so, what do you want me to do? Just send you an email saying. I just you know, heard. The yelling. Okay. Or I might just go and say, hey, I was friends with them and I heard yelling, but I don't want to do Okay. Okay. Well, exhibits around.
115. I wrote it down. 115. What's yeah, 115. Do you have your system on or off? It's on. It should be. I here. Okay. I messed with it. Yeah, it's on. Okay. Looks like it's out. Okay. I got an answer for you if I can answer with the word purple. Since you have introduced purple. the video and the photo taken of him when he was arrested, yep. are those available for me to get copies of to use on our website? I went in the stick, I stuck my head in Gary's office. He wasn't there. Probably. Uh, not during the trial because it's the trial still going on. Like when they were up on the screen, if you would have taken a picture well, of I it, I don't know what he he's been yeah, kind of all over the place. Like, um, but I can't I can't give it to you until the trial's over. Like, I didn't know if that what, was what was published. I mean, it's fair game as far as like right. what's in court. If you'd taken a picture of it, right? That's cool. I but I can't I can't I give you. I didn't know yeah. if he had done that. That was why I was. Tell what? Oh, if the camera guy took a picture of. The, the photo of the young and we've been introduced. Um, I saw him when he went away taking a picture when we had that up. Okay, because I just, you know, I thought the, the, the way he looked when he was arrested was definitely yes. well, interesting. Yes, it was. And, and the video of him, you know, yes. uh, in, in the uh, yes. convenience store. I guess where he admitted it with him? No, he didn't. Uh, he said the video was clear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Which ones? Photos and shoes. Uh, I did. Okay. Um, let's see, maybe it's here. Oh, it's here. Yep, that's how you do those.
right now because she still needs me for trials on Instagram. She's going to wait for to see the, like, when I'm up, when I'm back there watching, I see so like a motherly sort of, you know, she takes care of his, it's true. his, his, you know, the, the thing can always remind me. You need to, Ralph. Don't get to eat. I mean, barely you. Chet, we're up here talking about our outfits and like, seriously, you want to know that I wore this? Like, What's the John, John comes up like, we can hear him being chatting. As we were discussing, because I said I almost wore pink. Like, oh, I can't wear pink. I said I can wear pink. And you do. I can't. Because there's all these studies about what you can wear in front of a jury. You know, and and you know yeah. and, you know, Laura and I are nerds, and we've read the studies, and we've talked about the studies. Yeah. Laura, we have particular clothes that we wear in particular days, depending on what the witness the is and what they're going to say, because we're that anal. <laughs> Stop saying that. Wrong case. Different context. You're going to keep hearing it. Tell us it's like a first. Show me. Show me. Okay. Show me. You're getting along with Kelsey. Don't say that. You are our question. Kelsey, I'm going to ask two questions. About three questions. Yeah. Maybe four. Not two. Oh, I think this is my problem. This is when it goes off. Yeah. Well, no, that this this is when the is he gonna make it through the week? This is the moment. This this will be one of the big key moments. Yeah. This, well, this is the key moment because I, tomorrow there's just a lot of people, and I don't really don't see. I mean, he, 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 he yeah. He filed something, but it's like doesn't. Travis, he missed a couple times. And also, he finds out my contact. Yes, that's what I, I, I used to but that everything is done. You want to talk, then you want to talk about something. Yeah, for, that's where it could go through us for us. And you know, okay. Then it's going to be the trial. Then I'm going to do interview. Yeah, that's what I'm sorry. My mistake. Next time, please. <laughs> I'd expect that from an urban. Ooh. Wow. Well, that's actually more of a shot at my brother. My brother. <laughs> you work for Adams County, you might expect a little bit more. I got that taser last week for nothing. I don't know. Nothing. I thought it was 12. All over the bottom. One of them. What? John first sat down, so I was telling him they were in a few minutes, and Veronica's been here smiling. That's what I'm talking about. 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 That's what I'm Fingers. You kind of said the such. My fingers. Probably wouldn't have made it uh, two months ago, three months ago. Now the whole time I've been here hasn't been going out.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. The Senate Circuit Court is now in meeting with all of Robert P. Thompson, Judge Presiding. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, we'll go back on the record. It's now 1.15, returning after the lunch recess. It's reported that all of the jurors are present and ready to resume. So Mr. Jones, for the people, are you ready to call your next witness? Yeah, Your Honor. And Mr. Yon, are you prepared to proceed? Yes, sir. Sorry, let's check in. Jones or Miss Keck, who's your next witness? We would call John Shoney to the stand, Your Honor. Yeah, Mr. Shoney, step in, please. Forward to the deputy clerk, raise your right hand, and she will swear you in. 
You do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give when the call is now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be done. And come over here and have a seat in the witness stand. Jones, when you're ready with your questions. Thank you. Can you tell us your name, please? My name is John Shoney. What do you do for a living? I'm an investigator for the Adams County Sheriff's Office. How long have you worked as an investigator for the Adams County Sheriff's Office? Uh, approximately two and a half years. Before you were an investigator with the Sheriff's Office, were you a, a deputy with the Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. And how long were you a deputy with the Sheriff's Office? Uh, approximately six months. I want to talk to you about an investigation that you were part of that started on or about November 9th and 10th of 2021. Do you recall that investigation? Yes, sir. In the course of that investigation, was a suspect developed? Yes, sir. Was the name of that suspect Bradley Young? Yes, sir. After the 9th of November 2021, were you and other deputies looking for Bradley Young? Yes, sir. Was he found? Yes. Where was he found? He was located in Springfield, Illinois. Once you learned that he was located in Springfield, Illinois, did you go to Springfield as well? Yes, sir. He was found in a particular address in Springfield? Yes. Was that address 1906 East Cornell Avenue in Springfield, Illinois? Yes. And was a search warrant executed on that location? <clears throat> yes. Now, in the course of executing that search warrant, were certain items of property seized both from that location and from the defendant's person? Yes. I want to talk first about <clears throat> items that were seized from his person. During the course of your investigation was a <clears throat> brown, gold, beige purse recovered from his person? Yes. In fact, was he wearing it at the time of his arrest? Yes. I'm going to hand or I'll show you what's been marked as taken out of the bag, People's Exhibit Number 11. Is that the purse that was seized from the person of the defendant? Yes, sir. That purse had certain items of personal property in it? Yes. It had ABS checks? Yes. Checks from American Builder Supply? Yes, sir. Uh, checks that were made payable to Tina? Yes. Uh, it also had a voter ID card for Tina Loan, correct? Yes. There were also other items of personal property in that purse, correct? Correct. Was there a bag of jewelry in that purse? Yes. I'm going to show you this has been removed from a brown paper bag marked People's Exhibit 7. This bag of jewelry, or this jewelry, was that found in that purse? Yes. The purse that was removed from the defendant's purse? Yes. The same purse that had the voter ID card for Tina Loma? Yes. The same purse that had checks made payable to Tina? Yes. Checks from American Builder Supply, Tina's business? Yes, sir. In that same purse that was removed from the defendant's shoulder that had Tina Loman's voter ID card checked to Tina and that bag of jewelry that we saw, was there also a set of keys? Yes. Showing you what's been marked as People's Exhibit 10. Does that appear to be a set of keys? Yes, sir. The keys that were removed from the purse that the defendant was wearing? Yes, sir. Those keys belong to a Toyota Avalon, is that right? Correct. In the course of your investigation and executing that search warrant at 1906 East Cornell Avenue in Springfield, where the defendant was found, did you also make entry into a motorhome on that property? Yes, sir. And when you made entry into that motorhome, did you also find some items of jewelry 
in that motorhome. Yes. And Ms. Keck, if you could pull up People's Exhibit 58. Up on the screen, and you have a monitor there, in the middle of the screen there is a women's gold watch and a pin that we've learned has the Star Trek insignia and diamonds on it. Is that what you recovered from that motorhome? Yes. Motorhome on the same property at 1906 East Cornell where the defendant was found. Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as People Exhibit 12. Does that appear to be the actual watch and pendant itself? Yes, sir. Also, when executing that search warrant at 1906 East Cornell, were two items, specifically a chainsaw and hedge trimmer, recovered? They were later recovered, yes. At that address? At that address. I'll show you what's been marked as People's Exhibit 15. Does that appear to be the chainsaw that was recovered from 1906 East Cornell Avenue in Springfield, Illinois, where the defendant was found? Yes. <clears throat> and people's 16? Does that appear to be the hedge trimmer that was found at 1906 East Cornell Avenue, where the defendant was found? Yes. Your Honor, we'd ask the people to do this 15 and 16. Any objection? No, Your Honor, no. no Rules 15 and 16 are admitted without objection. I do apologize. I need to go back to the first that was found on the defendant again, People's Exhibit 11. Inside that purse, was there a significant amount of U.S. currency also found? Yes. And I'll show you what's been marked as People's Exhibit 6. Does that appear to be the currency that was found in that purse? Yes. That currency was counted, is that correct? Yes. According to the information, there were three $5 bills. Yes. 62 $10 bills. Yes. 143 $20 bills. Yes. 19 $50 bills. Yes. And 39 $100 bills. That's correct. So it's a total of $8,345 found in the purse the defendant was wearing at the time of his arrest. Correct. And that money was found in the same purse where Tina Longman's voter ID card was. Yes. Where Tina's keys were. Yes. And where her jewelry was. Yes. And the checks that were made payable to Tina as well from her business. Correct. Your Honor, we guess that People's Exhibit 6 be admitted into evidence. Any objection? No. All right. People's Exhibit 6 is admitted without objection. When Mr. Young was searched, the defendant was searching, I guess, for the record to be clear, the person that you executed that search warrant on, the person that was arrested in Springfield at that address, is he here in court? Yes. Could you identify him for us, please? Uh, it's the defendant. Your Honor, we ask the reflect he's identified the defendant. The record will reflect this witness has identified the defendant. Was he wearing anything on his feet? Uh, yes. A pair of shoes? Yes, sir. Were those shoes collected? Yes. People's given 14. One pair of white size 12 Reebok men's shoes worn by Yon at the time of his arrest. Are these the shoes that were seized? Yes. Your Honor, we ask that People's Exhibit 14 be admitted into evidence. Any objection? No, Your Honor. People's Exhibit 14 is admitted without objection. While the defendant was wearing these shoes, did you also take photographs of the shoes? Investigator Miller did, yes, sir. Photographs were taken? Yes. <clears throat> When asked the bailiff to approach the witness, hand him People's Exhibit 66, 67, 73, and 74.
Have you had a chance to look at those? Yes, sir. And are those photographs of the shoes that are in People's Exhibit 14, the shoes that were worn by the defendant at the time of his arrest on November 10th, 2021? Yes. Your Honor, we'd ask that those exhibits be admitted to evidence and ask leave to publish them to the jury. All right. What numbers were those? I apologize. It's 66, 67, 73, and 74, Your Honor. Mr. Beyond any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, so people's exhibits 66, 67, 73, and 74 will be admitted and may be published without objection. Up on the screen now is people's exhibit 65, which has already been introduced into evidence. Um, Investigator Shoney, the white shoes that we see at the bottom, these are the white shoes that we're talking about, correct? Yes. And people's 14 and the photographs are going to be introduced, correct? Yes, sir. Next slide, please. In this photograph, the defendant is standing on his right foot. His left foot is raised in the air so you can see the tread on the bottom of that shoe. Fair to say? Yes, sir. At the heel of that shoe, can you read that word even though it's upside down? Uh, yes, it says Reebok. Reebok. Next slide, please. Then we see a picture of the defendant's right leg raised standing on his left foot, showing the tread at the bottom of that right shoe. Is that right? Yes, sir. And at the heel of... That shoe, can you read that word for me? It also says Reebok. And you see a hexagonal, I don't want to, yeah, hexagonal pattern on the tread of that shoe. Yes. Next slide, Again, the bottom of the shoe showing the tread pattern and the word Reebok at the heel. That's people 73. Yes. At people 74. Yes. Again, showing the tread pattern, hexagonal pattern, Reebok on the heel of that shoe. Yes, sir. During the course of your... We're going to have some more photos. So you can during the course of your investigation, did you also, were you looking for a Toyota Avalon in retrospect to the, the keys that we saw in the purse? Yes. And was that vehicle found? Yes, sir. Where was it found in relationship to where the defendant was found? How many blocks away? Uh, it was located by the Springfield Police Department near the intersections of 15th and Cornell, so approximately four blocks away. And if we could pull up people's 51... This is the vehicle that was found approximately four blocks away from where def the defendant was found. Yes, sir. And the keys that we saw already were to this car. Yes, sir. The keys and the purse that the defendant was wearing. Yes, sir. Get the lights. Did you also interview the defendant, Bradley Owen? Uh, briefly, yes, sir. On November 11, 2021? Yes. Did you ask him about the last time he was in Quincy? I did. Objection. When you asked? Objection. Hey, grounds? So, uh, this uh, has already been suppressed. It's not admissible. Any statement made has already been suppressed due to there not being a statement. We went over this approximately three and a half months ago. I will take a brief recess and ask that the jury members return to the jury assembly room. We'll take up the objection. Please just please rise. Uh, order, do you believe, address this issue? 
Uh, excuse me, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Which order, pretrial order, do you believe addressed the issue? It was a uh, motion to suppress a uh, statement in case they wanted to make something of it. It was the statement, I believe it was from June 15th uh, motion that we did not hear until, I believe it may have been January or February. Um, it, was a, it was either a June 15th motion or uh, June 21st, I believe, of 2022. <laughs> June 15th of 2022 does not have any motion regarding defendant statements. You believe the other date was what? Uh, June 21st. It's It was sometime in June. It was two motions that uh, were not taken up for approximately seven months. And they ended up being taken up in, I believe, January or February. So it's been a little bit over three and a half months ago. Mr. Keck or Mr. Jones, are you finding any such motions? I see a motion to suppress June 17th, but that wasn't about. We're looking at 2022. I see a June 17th regarding Jeannie Pyatt and Stephanie Hendricks. And. Statements of Christine Christina Loman. We, we, I remember a motion to suppress on, on statements of Christina Loman that we confessed because we weren't going to use them. All right, Mr. Yon, if you can find the motion you're raising concerning your statements, defendant statements. Your Honor, it, it doesn't matter. I didn't know anything or wasn't able to say anything that would prejudice me, but it was suppressed. It was uh, suppressed early this year. It was one of the motions that took a long time to uh, be heard. And you've repeated that three times, but that doesn't give me any direction as to trying to find this motion of the numerous motions and order, orders entered pre-trial, so. It may be in the beginning of June or July. I'm sure it was June.
I apologize, Your Honor. We're going through the orders. I'm not filing anything. We won't go into a statement, Your Honor. All right. But we, again, if the defendant chooses to testify, we would reserve the right to use it on rebuttal if he chooses to testify. That's fine with me. I will be testifying. Okay. We can have the jurors brought back in, please.
Please be seated. Record, the jurors have returned to the jury box. And Mr. Yon had made an objection to a question by the state. The state is withdrawing the question, Your Honor. Withdrawing the question. All right. So that question will be withdrawn and jury instructed to disregard that question. Just a couple more. Oh, apologies, Your Honor. You're fine. Oh, Go ahead. Just a couple more questions, uh, Investigator. The uh, you were with Miss Fields on November 9th, 2021, when she collected the shoe prints that were in the house, correct? Correct. And the shoes that were collected from the defendant were not collected until the next day, the 10th or the early morning hours of the 11th of November, correct? Correct. That's all the questions I have. Thank you very much. Mr. Yon, any cross? Give me one moment, Your Honor. Investigator Shoney, uh, you arrived in Springfield. Um, can you relay the turn of events that caused you to conclude the finding of these uh, items? Upon my arrival, I was informed you were taken in custody by the U.S. Marshals, the address that you were taken in custody at. I completed a search warrant for that address, which led me to the discovery of the items you have referenced. And, uh... Can you describe what you saw on the search? Initially entering the scene, the uh, property of 1906 East Cornell. There was a motor home parked on the rear of the residence off of an alley. Um, upon my arrival, I immediately observed the person questioned sitting on a chair outside of said motor home. <clears throat> and, uh, you tell us a little bit about the procedure in a search. How, uh, for example, do you search first, take pictures last, pictures first, as you go? Overall pictures of the scene are taken initially before we disturb or move anything. Um, and then once the overall pictures are taken, pictures are taken of items as we gather them prior to us disturbing them in any way. <clears throat> and, uh, when you first arrived at Springfield, it's it's well known that there was four deputies and two went, <clears throat> excuse me, two went one way and two went another. Correct. Uh, two, two going to the police department to interview and two going to observe the scene, I'm guessing. Correct. Um, you weren't one that went to the scene to observe. No. You went directly to the police station. Yes. And... Uh, the other two officers, I won't name them right in this moment, but they, they went to the scene and they observed. Do you, what was their basis for going directly to the scene? You as an officer, in your opinion. I cannot testify to their basis of going to the scene. That would be up to them, Mr. Young. Yes, sir. Um, they, they then went to the police department themselves and uh, you helped them in obtaining a warrant, correct? I obtained the warrant myself, Mr. Young. Um, and then you left and went to the scene to search? Yes. And uh, upon your search, your warrant held a specific outline of what you were to search. I believe it was the motor home, the curtilage, uh, surrounding outing, build, outhouse buildings, such as sheds and whatnot. Um, did you search all of it, all of that curtilage? I personally searched the motor home and the exterior of the motor home. <laughs> and uh, there were suitcases, suitcases lo located outside that motor home. You Correct. Did not, you did not search them? I did. You did. And, uh, to your best recollection, were there any other shoes 
in them suitcases? Not to my knowledge, Mr. Young. And uh, you did not search the outbuildings, the sheds? I personally did not, no. All right. Um, do you recall if it was you that took the pictures or another deputy? That was the crime scene services individual from the Springfield Police Department that took those photographs. Mr. Fannin, I believe. Correct. Uh, Mr. Shoney, uh, as far as that purse is concerned, that purse was located there on a steel chair, I'm guessing, a uh, metal chair. Yes. Uh, right outside the motorhome. Could you... Uh, There was a pill bottle located around that, correct? Correct. Was it in the purse? I don't believe so. <clears throat> um, you all, you obviously conferred with uh, Springfield, Springfield detectives, Springfield police. Correct. As there was a homicide in the direct vicinity, true? Correct. And uh, you and your other deputies, y'all left at approximately, I believe it was 1.30 to 2.30 from here in Quincy, Adams County, to head that way? I would have to reference the report, Mr. Young. I don't remember what time we left town. It was in the afternoon. Okay. <clears throat> um, and there was a homicide in the direct vicinity, correct? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Um. And know that homicide did not have anything to do with the defendant? I didn't investigate the homicide, Mr. Yeon. I'm unaware. But it's common knowledge, correct? Not to me, Mr. Yeon. Right. And uh, upon the search, you said you searched the immediate exterior. Did you search the purse yourself? On scene? I looked in the purse as the photographs were taken, um, but yes, I did search the purse. <clears throat> That's all I have, Your Honor. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. Sit down. Thank you. Your Honor, we'd reserve from you, Sabina. Uh, Your Honor, we would reserve the right okay. to call him as a rebuttal witness. Okay. I would you myself. Need to remain to your available room. under your witness subpoena, sir. Thank you. Get ready for the next witness. Yes, people call Kelsey. Come forward to the deputy circuit clerk and raise your right hand. She'll swear you in. I do solemnly swear that the testimony you may give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help God. Okay, have a seat over here to my right. The witness stand, please. <laughs> Mr. Jones, when you're ready with your questions. Thank you, Your Honor. For the record, can you tell us your name? Kelsey Miller. Miss Miller, what do you do for a living? I'm an investigator with the Adams County Sheriff's Office. Can I have you pull that microphone a little closer to you? What do you do for a living? I'm an investigator with the Adams County Sheriff's Office. Much better. Investigator Miller, were you involved in the investigation of a crime that occurred on the 4300 North Bottom Road on November 9th, 2021? Yes. And in the course of that investigation, uh, were you assigned a specific task as it related to a court order and the person of the defendant, Bradley? Yes. And what was that task? To collect a buckle swab. Did you do that in this case? I did. The person you collected the buckle swab from, are they here in court? Yes. Is that person seated directly to my, not directly to my left, but to my left wearing a blue shirt? Yes. Your Honor, we'd ask that the record reflections identify the defendant as the individual she collected that buckle swab from. The record will so reflect. Can you tell me briefly what a buckle swab is? It's a swab from the inside of your mouth to collect DNA. 
and then that swab is then transferred to the Illinois State Police crime lab. That's correct. Is there a procedure that you use to collect that buckle swab? Yes. And what is that procedure briefly? I have the individual swish their mouth out with um, then using gloved hands, I take one Q-tip on either the left or right cheek, stay on that cheek, wipe it up and down, and then do the same thing with the next swab. And did you do that in this case with the defendant? I did. Did you collect both those buckle swabs? Yes. And put them into evidence? Correct. I'm handing, holding in my hand People's Exhibit 17. It says one sealed envelope containing one buckle swab, buckle swab collected from Bradley Yawn. Collection date is November 22nd, 2021, and the collection officer is you, Kelsey Miller. Is this the buckle swab that you collected from the defendant? Yes. Your Honor, we'd ask that People's Exhibit 17 be introduced into evidence. Any objection? No, sir. People's Exhibit 17 is admitted without objection. Thank you, Investigator Miller. That is all the questions I have. Any cross examination? Um, it's a buckle swab, that's all it is, correct? A swab of swab of DNA, correct? Correct. Simply for testing. Uh, Your Honor, uh, I'm finished with the witness right now. I'd like to call her at a later time. If he wants to go beyond the scope of our questions, we have no objection if he wants to do that now. You wish not right this moment, Your Honor. No, I do not want to do it right this moment. Okay. You will be excused from testifying, testifying at this time, but you'll need to remain available to be recalled as a witness. Okay. Just need to have any further witness? Judge, that's all the witnesses we have for today. The remaining witnesses we have are all lab personnel from the Illinois State Police that were not available until tomorrow morning, but they will all be here. All three of them will be here tomorrow morning. But also tell the court, um, outside of those lab people, we may have one other witness, but that's it. And I would anticipate being done with our case probably by noon tomorrow. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to recess for the evening. You may go about your normal affairs, and you must not discuss this case with anyone, including family members, friends, or your fellow jurors. As I told you at the beginning of this case, your job as jurors is extremely important. Your decision on your verdict is to be based only upon the evidence that you see and hear in this courtroom and the instructions of law that I will give you. Therefore, to remain fair and impartial, you must refrain from doing the following things until you are discharged from service on this case. You must not converse with anyone on any subject connected with this case. You must not read or listen to any outside comments or news accounts of this case. You must not discuss among yourselves any subject connected with the trial or form any opinion on the cause until you start your deliberations on the verdict. You must not view or go to the place where the offense was allegedly committed. If you hear or observe anything about this case outside this courtroom, whether inadvertently or otherwise, you must immediately inform me at the beginning of our next session. Do not discuss any of these things with your fellow jurors at this time or at any time until you are sent to the jury room for deliberation. You are to report tomorrow morning to start promptly at 9 a.m. and to continue your jury service in this case. And with that, I will release you for the day of jury service. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
take up jury instructions, or do you believe it's still a little early for that? I think actually, no. Your Honor, we're okay to take up jury instructions. At least the people are. The, uh, all right. the occurrence witnesses have all testified, and I feel fairly comfortable with the lab people are going to say tomorrow. So I, I think we can do the instructions. Mr. Yon, do you have any jury instructions? Uh, no, Your Honor. If, if we could, could we possibly wait till tomorrow? Only wanting to do it tomorrow. What do you perceive? Excuse me. Is it going to be over your noon hour tomorrow if the state rests? Uh, yes, we could. All right. So rather than eating lunch, you would rather be here doing a jury instruction conference. Fine with me. All right. That's what we'll plan on on request of defendant. Your Honor, uh, I do have a couple issues to take up before. Sure. Your Honor, I have, as I stated earlier, repeatedly requested to talk to witnesses. Uh, he told me to do what I had to do. In other words, yes, he told me to do what I had to do. I spoke to officers at lunchtime today, and I'm told by a sergeant, <coughs> Officer Ruth Bowden's husband, um, that I do not get anything unless I have a court order. In them exact words, I do not get anything unless I have a court order. He said, they can't even inquire whether witnesses want to speak to me unless I have a court order by the courts. He specifically said, well, have the judge come down here and tell me. And I proceeded to tell him, it is my right. You cannot deny me. He says, well, I'm denying you. Your Honor, I would request that the courts give me some type of order before I leave the courtroom to handle this issue once and for all. Um, it's been a blatant denial of rights and I'm trying to get this show on the road since I'm already being forced to do it at this time. I would ask the courts to uh, present me an order, please, so that I can proceed to ask the witnesses myself a yes or no as to whether they would like to be interviewed and speak to me. All right, Mr. Jones or Ms. Keck, here to respond. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge, as far as him talking to witnesses, I think the issue is he was wanting to talk to other inmates in the Adams County Jail, and I understand that that presents a security problem for the jail. If there are particular people he wants to talk to um, because he believes he will have relevant information, then I would ask that he tell the court what that relevant information is now before that interview occurs because he shouldn't just be interviewing people just because he wants to interview people. He's an inmate, as are these people. Karen Blackledge, certainly I understand his request to interview her. My understanding is at this point she does not want, wish to be interviewed by Mr. Yon if that changes. Objection, Your Honor. Grounds. Grounds are Mr. Jones does not know this. He just stated to his understanding. To his understanding. Right. He so does objections not overruled, but Mr. Jones respond to your argument. If that changes, if she indicates that she wants to be interviewed, then they can make those arrangements and, and certainly whether or not there's a court order or not, I don't know that that's necessary, but if the jail wants a court order to have that occur, then that's fine. Um, obviously, there'll be some security concerns, so we'll have to deal with that in a particular way, but we can do that. The other names that he's provided, uh, Michael Cameron is no longer in the custody of the Adams County Jail. He's a DOC inmate. I can't do anything about that. Uh, the other two names he gave were Travis Wiley and his father, Bradley Young Sr. Both those individuals are in the Adams County Jail. However, at this point, I'm not aware of any relevant information that either one of them could provide to this case. So I'd ask that there be some showing before we make arrangements with the jail to allow him to interview those witnesses who don't have any relevant information for this case. Your Honor, uh, if you'd like me to proceed. If I would like you to address Travis Wiley, what? Your Honor, he would be a rebuttal witness or a witness, simply a witness on my behalf 
if Michael Cameron and Troy Hedges were to testify. Um, as to my father, I will go ahead and put this on the record, Your Honor. My father and my sister tried to come up here for months when I had Citro, and I told Citro to let them place forth their alibi, their story, their whatever. Citro and his office denied my mother and my father, or excuse me, my sister and my father. Um, yes, my sister did only come up here because she provided the transportation for him that day. However, they'd been denied. That's one of the reasons I went pro se, is because I was not getting effective assistance of counsel out of anybody. And I have an alibi of where I was at at this time. And, well, they've been denied. My dad and my sister come up to the office on four occasions that I'm aware of, and were turned around, told that they do not have the right to speak to them. I told Mr. Citro the last time, I will sign a release if I have to. Oh, don't worry about that. I said, well, let me sign the release anyways. Oh, I'll get with you. It's never got with me, Your Honor. Well, my dad went about a year and a half ago, and in the past year and a half, you haven't been able to speak to your father or sister. Is that your testimony or your statement? Your Honor, I'd hate to place it on the record, but my, my father got so depressed, he went into a stupor. I, I just need an answer to my question. Have you, you been speak? unable to speak with either of those individuals in the last year and a half? Your Honor, do you know what they've been doing to me in this county? Is it a yes or no? Have you? speak to either of those times. individuals in a the couple, last year and a half? A couple times, yes, but I'd like to put it on the record. I'm not asking to do this in private. I'm not asking to do it. It, it could be in restraints. I have nothing to hide. I'm asking to interview a witness. It's what's, uh, it, and that's what I'm entitled to. I'm held to the same standards. I should not have to go through all these extracurricular activities just to get my rights. It's been an extreme battle so far. It's been ridiculous. The proof I have of denial of rights is probably enough for an appellate reversal. Well, we would have to have a conviction as a result of this case to begin, so let's yes. not put the cart in front of the horse. Yes, sir, I understand that, and I'm trying to prevent a conviction, Your Honor. So in order to do that and not have to go through that, I need to interview witnesses. And now the county has pulled out every obstacle possible. And I know it's not just them. They work with other people in this building. You know, I'm asking for the order so that I can handle my business and do as I need to do. Your Honor, with regard to Travis Wiley, the people are not calling, as we've previously stated, we're not calling either Michael Cameron or Troy Hedges. So Mr. Wiley won't be needed as a rebuttal witness at that point. Um, with regard to the defendant's father, uh, this is the first we're hearing of an alibi defense. And as the defendant has said, he has held to the same standard as every other attorney. Any other attorney is told that alibi is a defense that has to be given notice of. And he has never given notice of an alibi defense, as is required by Illinois law. It's a little late now for him to be trying to introduce a quote unquote alibi defense. We have a right, if he's going to present an alibi defense, to investigate that alibi. He's under an obligation to provide that information, and he never has. Mr. Citro didn't tell you? Well, reviewing the defendant's supplemental discovery response that was filed July 10th of 2023, there is no affirmative defense disclosed therein, and so the court does not or finds that you, Mr. Yon, have not disclosed as required under the rules an affirmative defense or alibi defense to the people. So that being the basis of you needing to speak with Bradley Yon Sr., the court is going to deny your motion. And as to Mr. Jones has just revealed, the state is not calling Cameron or Hedges, which was the reason you would need Wiley as a rebuttal. So based upon that disclosure, the state is denying that motion. And I will be taking Mr. Jones at his word that Ms. Blackledge does not want to speak with you or be interviewed as a witness in this case. 
And so I will be denying that motion. You will be allowed to inquire of her in cross-examination or if you call her as a witness tomorrow, if she's called to testify. You can get into that with her if you would like at that time. Anything else, Mr. Young? Your Honor, just so the court knows, I will speak with jail administrator Curran again tonight. I will ask him to approach Ms. Blackledge and ask her again if she wants to submit to an interview. If she says yes, we will make that happen. If she says no, then obviously we can't. But I will ask that it happen again tonight mm -hmm. so that so that we can address that issue if it, it, it comes up. I don't want to be unfair to the defendant. Your Honor, I object to that. Administrator Curran has taken a lot of he he's acted as if he has authority of these issues he has no authority in these issues he's taken my discovery out i of will ask miss blackledge all right so mr jones I shall be able to ask, ask miss blackledge so that we know well mr young mr. jones does not want me to speak mr young blackledge don't talk over me we've yes, discussed sir. that before all right the other issue is, while you are representing yourself and have the rights to interview witnesses as an attorney, there are no special privileges because you're incarcerated and an inmate. And so if there is a jail policy that inmates are not to communicate with other inmates, we'll follow the policy. Mr. Jones is trying to extend an opportunity to you that he will follow up with Ms. Blackledge and if she does in fact want to speak with you, then he's going to make that happen, which is beyond what the court's likely to grant on your motion. So he's going to go above and beyond what I'm willing to do following the rules to hopefully make that happen. So anything else, Mr. Jones? No, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Yon. Um, Your Honor, I, once again, I would object to continue on with this trial because I did ask for an attorney Mr. Um, Young, the issue has been addressed when you raised it by written motion and formal argument. So on your oral motion, the objection is noted of record and is denied. I just wanted to make record again, Your Honor, that's all. Make sure we have it on the record. Anything else, Mr. Young, before we recess for the day? No, sir. All right, we'll be in recess. Thank you, please rise. report now saying the recess. No worries.